Hello to all of our WSI members. This is a, uh, an experiment and we're excited about doing this. This is sort of like a David Letterman and our next guest needs no introduction. Um, our next guest is Anna Roberts and Anna Roberts is a Cardinal Fellow of WSI and um, she has uh, a local and national award-winning uh, watercolor uh, paintings um, uh, for everyone to look at. And Anna is also an art teacher at several Indianapolis schools. And one of those special teachers who radiates her love of art uh, with everything she does and nurtures talent um, from those around her. So we're excited to uh, have a conversation with Anna and I hope that our members learn something about what it takes to be in a juried show. Uh, because Anna certainly has a good track record. So, Anna, tell us just a little bit about some of your um, uh, national acceptances and awards that you have received in the last couple of years. Um, I have gotten my master's status from the Transparent Watercolor Society of America last year, and um, I won Best of Show at the State Fair. And I am a signature member of the National Honor Society. Or the that's, that's my <laughs> school. That's good. Um, that's good. The National Watercolor Society and the Northwest Watercolor Society and our group. Um, so you've been juried into those shows and yes. you have won awards to yes. the, those shows. And that's uh, very exciting, and it's very difficult to do. What is it? What does it mean when you've won signature status? Um, you've been accepted to two times. Like, say, for instance, the National Watercolor Society. You've been accepted two times into their international show, and then they've seen those two paintings. And to acquire your signature status, you have to ship them three more images, like the actual paintings so that a group of artists look, uh, well, their people look at it and then they decide if you get to be in or not. That's a very scary thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and, and, a ter and a huge honor for you. So um, let's talk a little bit about what motivates you as an artist, what you look for when you're uh, determining what it is that you're gonna paint. What, what, uh, what tweaks you right there? Um, I believe it's just what motivates me is an inner passion, I do believe. And I get to see it every day when I go to school with my little kids because you tell them to do something and they just, it's sheer abandonment and happiness that yeah. they do their art with. They just and get see, it on. Yes, they? you never want to forget that. And so I get to see it all the time. So. I, that's what motivates me, is to remember that place in your heart that used to be there when you were little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, what kind of subjects make you stop and take a picture? Something unusual, because I've realized that you cannot get anywhere into an international show or, or well, even in our show. Regional it, shows. It's usually a... Um, like a different type subject or if it's a common subject you had to say it in a different way so you look at it from a whole different perspective yes. rather than looking at it straight on yes yeah because a judge sees maybe like in an international show um, 1500 paintings and maybe 500 of them are portraits so your portrait better be the one that stuck in his mind. That they really, it really catches their yes. eye. Yes. Okay. So like if you're a landscape painter, uh, a juror will look at 15 pictures of the trees around a stream. Yes. So your painting better really stand out as something unusual. Yes. Okay. That That's makes my, a lot of sense. My yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So where do you find most of your subjects? I know you recently had a trip, and I want you to tell us about that, but where do you find most of your subjects? Um, I, I, and I just kind of 
happened on them, I think. Like, I was in Key West, and we were at the swimming pool. This was after Christmas this year, and everybody started screaming and running, and, and I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? So I got my camera, because whatever it was, I was going to take a picture of it. And this three-foot iguana got in the swimming pool, swam across, climbed up a tree, a palm tree, and so by that time I was over there and I had my camera and just when he was getting ready to, I don't know where he was going, he was going up, he turned around and he looked at me and it was, it's the best picture ever. Uh, I cannot believe that everyone else was running away <laughs> and yeah. you were running towards it. Um, I've seen the picture and I've seen the beginning of your painting and I'm so excited about it. Um, uh, it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So um, you've probably been through different uh, subject matters like I know you did a whole series on rusty stuff. Um, what other uh, series have you been through and what is your current? Well, I'm been through shiny stuff, rusty stuff, and um, like I wanted to preserve the rusty stuff on paper because people throw it away. So I thought, you know, if I could just like capture it in uh -huh. time, it would be there. And then um, like I got onto, um, I love blue crabs. And <laughs> I was in Georgia and this little boy was fishing for him and he was telling us, you know, if they come up with red on their claws, they're girls. And so he brought up a whole basket of them and I got so many good pictures of those crabs and that's what got me into the National Watercolor Society. I remember that painting. Yeah. It was uh, a pile of crabs. <laughs> yeah. It really was. And the colors were beautiful. Yeah. And that's what the judge told me got what, because we got to sit down with the judge. We uh -huh. had dinner with them. And it's a whole big process out there because I got to go to California to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so when they told me I had the award, I was like, this will get us airline tickets and a room. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> so, right. Um, so anyway, he was all about color. Uh -huh. So that's I try to use a lot of color. Was that uh, was that your Brian? Uh, mm -hmm. what, what's his last name? Rutenberg. Uh huh. Yeah, and his paintings are vivid. Oh, they are. Yeah, they are yeah. gorgeous. He's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so um, give us, uh, give the members some advice about um, uh, the composition. Um, what do you, what do you pay attention to when you uh, compose? I know that you have a photograph and you might have three photographs of the same thing. So how do you, how do you manipulate all of that for a composition? Well, I try to remember the rule of thirds, and since I have to teach composition to my seniors at Cardinal Ritter High School, I, um, especially during the pandemic, it's very hard, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you had to review a lot of that. So I realized that I like unusual composition, like um, to maybe try to break a rule, but break it intelligently so that it will be different when it passes the judge. But the rule of thirds is probably my most desired Explain that just a little bit like more for our members. Two-thirds about one thing and one-third about another. Or, I mean, you're split. Say, for instance, the landscape, which I don't paint because Jerry, if you can't be Jerry Smith, why paint it? <laughs> so <laughs> if you have um, one-third land, two-thirds sky, but... Another way to divide it would be sideways, like you could have one-third tree, one-third. It's just, you have to look at things differently. Okay, and the placement of the horizon line? Yeah. Um, should never be in the middle. Should never be in the middle, yeah. right. Okay, all right, so those are some good rules too. Um, what are, what's an example of a rule that you would break? I'd put something in the middle. Maybe. Oh, but do it so that it's not just 
you know, blaring at you in the middle. You have to like tuck it in and hide it. That's really interesting because I've always heard that you don't want to look at a painting and see what the object, the focus, mm -hmm. right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. But you would break that rule and tuck it in and hide it, mm -hmm. so it's a bit of a surprise. Yes. Okay. All right. So, what are some of the uh, simple mistakes that artists make when they submit to a jur jury show? Well, I, I'm not sure that there is a mistake because if you're brave enough and you painted your painting and, and you submitted it, just because that person didn't like it, you, that is his show or her show. Maybe the next judge will, you know, that'll be a painting that they like. So I don't know if there's a mistake. Bad choice of words. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because every painting is, I mean, like I look at my kids at school, my little kids, and think, who am I to say that this, that just because they didn't follow what I said, their mom's going to love it, and it's going to be on her refrigerator. So I try to remember that, too. Okay. So uh, one of the things that I heard you say was that um, just because one juror says no, mm -hmm. that you should continue yes. using that painting. Yes, yeah. and a, a perfect example of that is our artist, Jean Smith, who used to be one of our great artists in this club. She had a portrait of her husband that got rejected from, I think, I believe it was five different shows. Wow. And finally, she put it in the state fair because just to try it one more time and it got best of show. So that wow. shows you it's the judge's preference. Uh -huh. And they're not wrong or right. It's no, what, it's just their preference. Right. Yeah, You're just lucky when you hit a judge that loved yours. I guess I shouldn't get discouraged after two rejections. No, of the same not. Pain. No. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Um, w w you and I had a conversation recently about catching the eye. Uh, give us, give uh, the members some more examples about how you catch a juror's eye. What catches a juror's eye? We don't know, but yeah, you've had some experience. Well, like, I'll just go back to my crabs since I already talked about that. Uh -huh. What? Like, you could paint a crab, you know, sitting on a one crab, mm -hmm. but, like, to catch the juror's eye, um, I put them in a net, and, like, their, the girl's pink claws were uh -huh. sticking out of a purple net against a bright pink opera cloth. So, so okay. that's kind of, I mean... Eye-catching. Right, and I made, I mean, a net's not purple. But mine was because I knew if you put those two things together, it would be like it would. You have to look. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I think I've learned from you, there's a huge list of every time I'm with you, I learn something. And uh, but one of the things I'm trying to do is to use unusual colors. Yeah. And not uh, paint an object uh, literally the color. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I love Daniel Smith paints because they're so granular and transparent. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to really jazz something up, just mm -hmm. use a really strange color. Yeah. And uh, that's fun. Yes. And there's people that paint with only, you know, limited palette. Uh huh. And then there's people like me that paint with, like if, like unusual. If I see it in a tube and I haven't tried it, I'm gonna buy it and try it uh -huh. if it's transparent uh -huh. and nothing's right or wrong. It's you know, right. It's what comes out of your heart. Yeah, I think Bob Bratton is a good example of somebody who uses uh, very unusual colors mm -hmm. because he paints a lot of rust and a lot of mechanical yes. things and they're green and right. they're yellow and they're blue and yes. they work and yeah. during the pandemic when you when i couldn't you know go and get your paint like i had one a um 48 tube 
box of new paint from the National Watercolor Society. I was say that you won. Yes. You? Yeah. And so I had all these colors that like the pandemic was really uh, uh, good for me. <laughs> Not that, no, I shouldn't say that. It's good for my painting life. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you experimented with all those colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the, um, the intent with this interview and conversation um, was that I think that you have things uh, to share. Um, and we all have things to share, but you've had a career of winning awards. And I think that one of the things that I consider valuable about the time we paint together is everything that I learn from you to make me a better artist. And um, so this is a first and I hope a series of interviews that we can have with um, some of our award winning artists so that the rest of us can learn from you. And I really appreciate you stepping up to the plate and saying, <laughs> okay, because I think it was about a year ago that mm -hmm. I first mentioned this and I was mm -hmm. wondering how you would take it because you're yeah. kind of a shy, humble person. <laughs> and I thought this is really gonna step out for you, but this has truly been valuable and I really appreciate okay. uh, the time that you spent in, um, thinking about it and coming here so yeah I'm um, between schools right now I just left yeah. a whole room of third graders and <laughs> I have to, go to my seniors now yeah that's that is really a talent to be able to go from mm -hmm. your third graders to your seniors in high school yeah I have yeah. to remember that they don't have to raise their hand if they have to use the restroom <laughs> <laughs> well I'm sure they all love you so thank you very much for your time yeah, you. and um, we'll sign off at this time and hope that we can uh, bring more of these interviews to our membership. Thank you.